Hey guys, we're back with more science for your ass. <laughs> In today's video, we're going to talk about a new study that came out and was uh, summarized a uh, great article in examine.com. I'll, I'll put a link to it below. Uh, but a great article about a new study that came out that was a year-long diet study examining low-carb versus low-fat to see which produced better results in weight loss and fat loss. And what they were trying to assess was a few different things. One, they wanted to see if genetic components uh, determined how well some groups lost fat. Also, the insulin hypothesis. So is insulin the most important factor and in insulin secretion and insulin sensitivity in individuals the most important factor for losing weight? And then also just comparing the two diets, the, the low carb and uh, low fat. And some of the criticism, there are studies out there and I've talked about them where it shows that when you equate calories there are no differences in fat loss between a low fat diet and a low carb diet. But some of the criticisms have been, well, you, there wasn't enough subjects or the, the, the diet period wasn't long enough. Well, this was a year long study uh, funded by NUSI, uh, funny enough. Uh, NUSI is a organization that is uh, run by Gary Taubes and Gary Taubes is a very famous low carbohydrate advocate. In fact, at the, uh, the Epic Fitness Summit in 2015 in the debate with Alan Aragon, I remember him specifically saying that this study was going to prove that low carb diets were superior to any other diet. So it was funded by NUSI, all right? And it was a year long study and they recruited 600 participants. So first off, hats off to the researchers for, uh, for being able to recruit that many subjects and, 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 and do a year long diet study, that's very difficult. And they had about a 20% dropout rate, actually you know, about 80% of them made it to the end, which is actually pretty good for a nutrition study. So over 400 participants made it till the end. And they found a few interesting things. The first thing they found was they, did, they didn't set people on specific calorie intakes. Um, they just told them to eat either under this amount of fat or under this amount of carb uh, to begin with. And then they said you could increase it to a level you thought was sustainable. So when they started, they wanted the low fat group under 20 grams of fat and the low carb group under 20 grams of carbs. Both groups increased those amounts as they went through the diet, but the low fat group was still lower fat than the average American diet and the low carb group was still well under um, the normal carb intake. Uh, so what they found was that uh, they assessed their calorie intakes in both groups at different times during the study and found that the calorie intakes between the groups weren't different. Uh, in fact, they were almost identical. They also found that over the course of 12 months, there was no difference in weight loss or fat loss, period. No difference, zero, not, sorry, there was a small difference, not statistically or clinically relevant. Further, there was no difference in resting energy expenditure uh, between the groups. And also they found that insulin secretion and sensitivity did not make a difference in weight loss, that it was the total calorie amount drove the weight loss. Now some news outlets have tried to spin this study and say this study showed that food quality matters more than food quantity. That is not what the study said at all. Um, the study, they, they recommended to people that they use, uh, they consume whole foods, um, minimally processed. That doesn't mean that, that quality matters more than quantity. I'm not sure where they got that idea from. Quantity absolutely matters. These people were in a caloric, calorie deficit and that's why they lost weight. But what they showed was one, that a low fat diet was just as good at producing weight loss as a low fat diet when calories are equated. And two, 
that the adherence rates were pretty similar between both groups. There was no difference. A lot of people, uh, advocates of low carbs say, well, maybe there's no metabolic difference, but uh, low carbs easier to stick to. Uh, that doesn't appear to be the case. Now, some people, some individuals may find that a low carbohydrate diet is easier to stick to for them. But some people may find that a low fat diet with more carbohydrate is easier to stick to for them. And in those cases, it is up to the individual to choose which diet fits their lifestyle better. But the most important thing is creating a calorie deficit that you can be consistent with. And this study showed pretty conclusively that insulin uh, is not the main driver of obesity or uh, preventing weight loss. It's just not, not based on the data we have here. Uh, further, they looked at things like um, LDL, uh, triglycerides, and cholesterol. Those mostly seem to be a wash. Uh, there was uh, the low fat group lowered their LDL um, and the high fat, low carb group actually slightly raised their LDL. So which would be a bad thing. But if you look at their uh, HDL, the, the low carb group also raised their HDL in concert with their LDL. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's kind of a wash in, in terms of those couple things. And actually the low carb group also decreased their tri triglyceride levels. So I think what we can conclude from this study is that, um, you know, it didn't really compare ketogenic, which I'm sure the ketogenic zealots will say, well, if you're in ketogenic, it's just completely different than low carb and it's going to, you know, magically change all this stuff. Um, there's already studies on that. That doesn't appear to be the case. Um, it would be nice to see a long-term study on a ketogenic diet, but what I would submit to you is that if the ketogenic diet was so easily maintainable, why did people not continue to eat low carb? Because the instructions they were giving at the beginning was eat under 20 grams of carbs per day, but there was no limitations on fat. So if the ketogenic diet is so easily maintainable, why did these people choose to eat more carbs than a ketogenic diet, but still have relatively good adherence levels to the diet? And if we look at the metabolic differences uh, in calorie equated ketogenic versus non-ketogenic diets, uh, there's no difference in fat loss, resting energy expenditure, or, or many, any measurable variable. So does the ketogenic per diet produce more weight loss? Um, you know, it would be nice to get a longer term study with more participants, but based on the data we have now, uh, it's very unlikely. So again, the take home is whatever diet that you can use that produces sustainable weight loss for you and that fits your lifestyle best is probably the best diet for you for fat loss. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this, like the video, share the video, subscribe to my channel, check out my website, and I'll catch you guys next time.